Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. So today I've been really inspired to create a small video about prescribing for the animal kingdom with the liquid crystals. So this um, mainly is for our practitioners, but of course anybody is free to watch this and to learn as well. And hopefully you will become inspired to become a liquid crystals practitioner. So in our modality, we do have the ability to treat the animal kingdom as well, which is a massive gift for them and also for ourselves. To be able to do this, you do have to be qualified in what we call an advanced level, so that you can use the tools that the animals require so they can receive the remedies too. So as an advanced practitioner, you can use what we call the animal activators. And what happens is, is just as the humans would receive a remedy, this translates this over to the animal so they too are able to process it and to be able to use it in their own way and in their own language. It is an amazing gift and anybody who isn't prescribing for animals yet, this video is definitely for you. So in my inbox, I all the time get messages of people saying, oh, I've got this dog and my client's dog has this and what do I prescribe? The first thing I want to say to you is you are no different to me. Okay, so we've been through the same training and we have learned exactly the same things. The, the positive side of this is it's actually really pretty simple and you just need to have a little bit of confidence and faith in yourself as a practitioner that you, you know, will be picking the right remedy. And so you might say, oh, well, dogs can't talk. <laughs> they can talk and a lot of the time, the remedy is right there basically on the tip of your tongue waiting to be discovered for them. Also, of course, we know that looking at their owners and the problems or the health issues that the owners are displaying are also amplified by the animal too. But let's wind this back a little bit. Let's say that you have a client and they say to you, hey, my dog has got anxiety. What can I do about this? Aside from looking at the owner as well, because the dog is displaying what the owner needs help with, you would treat a dog exactly the same way as you would treat a human symptomized for anxiety. So you would pick the best remedies that you usually use for anxiety and you think suit your client, who's a dog, and you just need to make sure that you use the animal activator as well and so you either choose and decipher whether it's a long nose or a short nose and then you can even use remedies such as the 13 combinations which i find the animals respond to amazingly so first up you could go okay the dog's got anxiety let's see the severity of this without being too complex let's have a look at either de-stress or we've even got the emergency remedy i use the emergency remedy a lot for the animal kingdom and they they respond so amazingly to it so if their anxiety you know is not too bad you should go for the de-stress if you find that their anxiety is you know really on the scale from kind of you know like i would say eight to ten i would actually be looking at the emergency remedy so it's not hard you don't have to pull anything magical or be communicating with the animal and have it talking to you you can use your knowledge and use your training and go, oh, I see, I can prescribe you this. And then what you can do is if that is working for the animal, you do exactly the same thing as what you do with the human and then you go back for a follow-up and you pick one of the remedies out of the, the, out of the combination that you feel is best suited to them and you treat them with a single, of course, using their animal activator as well. You can use any of the remedies with the animals. You can also take a massive look and advantage with the body key systems. So a lot of the things that people come to us with, with our animals, is physical illnesses and diseases. And they say, well, I've just had you know, my cat at the vet and they have this wrong with their urinary system or this wrong with their digestive system. You go in with the urinary or the digestive system all right, and you look at the main seven crystals, seven, eight crystals that you can pick from, and you tailor it specifically to their case, just like you would with a human. All right, you just have to make sure that you use the feline activator as well with that, so that they're receiving that remedy properly. You know, it's not difficult, and everyone should be doing it. It's something that, you know, I, it, I, I actually, I, I don't know, like, 
I look at it and go, wow, you know, like these people are so amazing at treating all of these human beings. And then when it comes to treating an animal, they kind of seize up and go, oh, no, you know, that's not the right thing. And not to mention, the animals respond so beautifully to it. You know, they're not like humans and they don't carry around bags of, you know, the past 10 years and the past 20 years. They are just ready to open and to receive. And so, you know, of course, what they choose to do with that is their choice. Um, and, you know, you can provide the remedy. And then you've also got to look at, like I touched base with earlier, the owners or the person closest to the animal. Another thing that I do a lot with is when I am treating the animals is I always look at the name trinity, so the life purpose of the animal, and I look at what they are trying to say to their owner and the lessons, they are the most important lessons that they are trying to teach to their owner. So quite often the keys to their illness can actually lie within their life purpose trinity and you know it kind of lays there blind until we pick it out and go aha i see so this animal is trying to teach you personal power you've got digestive issues your animal's got digestive issues you know let's treat both of you and get you working on it i do find that you can prescribe the animal over and over again and if you know the owner or mum or dad of the animal isn't doing their stuff the animal doesn't get better okay so it will just keep showing you hey this is what i'm here for this is what i'm trying to show you look at me you're looking at me every day i'm giving you this message i'm letting you know what's wrong pay attention obviously you'll go well you know animals get sick and they get old and eventually they have to die of something and this is true but there's always ways that you can connect and if you do get a patient or a client like an animal that is sick one of the most amazing and you know that you know, they've kind of come to you a little bit too late and this animal might have three weeks left, three months, whatever it is. What you can do for the owner and for the animal and such a big honour for this animal is to allow the owner to know why the animal is in their life, to communicate the lessons and to even give the owner the name trinity of the animal. It's a really, really beautiful and potent process that you can use for the healing that's going on and it allows the animal to transition in peace. I've seen it happen quite a few times and, you know, people don't like losing their animals, but the process that they actually go through and the owner in particular uh, makes it just a lot easier for them and they really understand why their companion was there, why they chose them, why their name is what they, you know, it is. Some people you know, adopt animals and they don't change the name and that's okay too. You still work with the name that the animal is being called by the person they're closest to. One of the other things that I do find is animals are very, very, very verbal in the dream state. Now, not everybody works with that, but for me particularly. So if you are a dreamer and you know that you're going to have to work with the animals, I usually work with Jade and I'll take three drops before I go to bed and I have a notepad and a pen beside my bed. And quite often the animal will turn up and tell me the remedies that they are needing. They will also tell me if they need a name change and this has been quite a common occurrence. People have named the animal and it's not what the animal should be called and not what it's here for. It's really interesting when that happens. And the minute you change the name and you actually prescribe the new name, Crystals, the animal's behaviour just absolutely, just at 100% flip around. So pay attention to your dream state. Pay attention, you know, for anyone who's still watching this video who isn't even a liquid crystals practitioner, the animals are here and the language that they sing and weave with the earth and through nature to us are worth gold. They really are singing our pathways back to health, singing our pathways back to ourself. They teach the true lessons of what we label enlightenment and they live through purpose. They don't question anything and they just do, you know? And so they serve as a massive reminder to all of us to really listen to our intuition, to pay attention for those drives, for those urges and from our inner knowing, you know? And that is key, that is key in everything. And as we know, as we get older and we listen, we actually are able to follow that more and our life kind of pans out the way that we're supposed to be doing it, so to speak. More doors open and, you know, yeah, it just gets better and better. So 
you know, I want you to, if again, if you're not a liquid crystals practitioner or even if you are and you really haven't paid too much attention to the animal language, what happens is, is when you see your animals and they turn up, you do need to go and look at the crystal they are attached to, you know, and connected with and the message of the crystal and also the message of the animal through the animal page. So if you don't know what the liquid crystals is, and you're on my Facebook page, then I highly suggest you go and look up the liquid crystals and liquidcrystals.com and you also look up uh, TLC Animal Medicine as well because we have put on there the messages that the animals are bringing through in conjunction with the crystals as well. So they really do add that extra aspect of healing for you. So if I see a raven turn up, for example, a raven is connected to kyanite and kyanite is alignment. I know if I keep seeing one, you know, yes, you might say, okay, well, you live in Lake Victoria and there's crows everywhere. I'm sorry, not crows, ravens everywhere. And you go, yeah, that's right. But I live in an area where there's lots of them. So at this time in my life, if I'm seeing them and they're really standing out for me, I, I really need to work on alignment and it's something that I need to pay attention to. You know, if you live somewhere in the world where you are seeing dugongs all the time, which obviously we don't see them here in Victorian waters, <laughs> then you have the message from black coral, which is light in the dark. All right, so wherever we are in the world, we have different messengers because that's where we've chosen to be. So the beautiful thing is, is we can either choose to travel to every place in the world and with the liquid crystals, if we can't do that, we basically have the world in the toolbox. And so we can align people to animals as well. So we can create what we call communication remedies. So you can either communicate with your domesticated pets or you can travel to the zoo and communicate with animals in the zoo or in the wild as long as you're safe. And we can also just create them. You don't actually literally have to be in front of the animal. So it allows you to step into what we call the animal's consciousness and really understand and process and view things around you the way that the animal would and you learn from them. So the more you do it, it's kind of an ongoing over and over again process. So it is really, really special and it's something very, very unique to the liquid crystals. And I do it quite often with my animal friends. And the other thing that I do um, for uh, practitioners again is I have what I call my animal dosing <laughs> set. And what I have done is I actually have dose bottles set up, the whole 77. And when I see an animal that jumps out at me, you know, like, the weird ones that you just go, oh, well, like, hello, praying mantis, you're right in my face. Like, I get your message, it's tanzanite. I will then go and instantly take a three-drop dose of tanzanite because it's basically screaming at me saying, hello. You know, I remember one day, it was tanzanite day, and one kind of wafted in across the window, and it literally sat there and started waving its hand at me. And I was like, okay, I'm off to get some tanzanite. So... You know, all of us have these experiences and these weird, you know, animal meetings. And the other thing is, is it doesn't always just have to be real animals. So you could be watching a movie or you could be driving past the billboard and something, an animal is there and it really jumps out at you and really kind of, you know, makes you stop and draw it into you and you go, okay, like it's significant. It is the world's way of actually saying to you, hey, pay attention, this is a message from this animal. Obviously, if you're dreaming about certain animals and working with different animal totems and you've never ever looked at what crystals are connected to these totems in the liquid crystals, I highly recommend that you go and do that too. So if you are the kind of person that has been walking around with a bison by your side or riding on a bison's back, since you were five years old and you don't really know why, this is connected to Jasper and this is the crystal of nurture, self-nurture. And so the bison, while it's big, strong and sturdy, is asking you to actually nurture yourself. It's very grounded, it's very protecting, it's a beautiful soft energy and so connected to the earth. So there's a reason why you've been told you've got bisons by you or you've got eagles or, you know, all these different things. And they really are also 
in its sterilization of the crystals speaking to you through what we call the language of power. Okay, so I hope that was a little sharing <laughs> time for you guys and that you got something out of it. I do intend to do some more of these. This is my first one. So um, let me know what you think and I will see you guys soon.